Hello, my name is Julie Kelly and this is General Biology and we are going to talk about cells and specifically cell theory and why cells are so small. Okay, let's go. Okay, so we have learned, let me get my pen, we have learned about the levels of biological organization and that the cell is the basic unit of life. And let's see, um, the cell is a unit of a larger whole. And that there is nothing smaller than a cell that's considered life. So an organelle, molecule, an atom, those are not considered life. So you are made up of 75 trillion cells with some extracellular matrix added in between. The matrix is for holding the cells together and for communication between the cells and kind of like packing peanuts, sort of a cushion in between the cells as well. And you have approximately 200 types of cells in your body. One, for example, is like this neuron or nerve cell. So a neuron conducts impulses from, say, your fingertips to your spinal column and then up to your brain. Another example of another cell you have would be a fat cell. So this is a cell right here. This is the cell membrane. And inside that cell, there's this huge drop of fat taking up most of the cell. So much so that it's squishing everything else to the side, including this nucleus right here. So a fat cell is important for providing energy, holding storage of that fat to be able to provide energy. Another cell that you have would be a muscle cell. So a muscle cell that allows you to move, to be able to move your fingers, to provide leverage between the, the muscle provides leverage to the bone to provide um, a lever to be able to, to move your body. So most cells are extremely small. So small that you need a microscope, like a light microscope or an electron microscope to be able to look at the cells. One exception would be an ostrich egg, which is a cell. However, until it's metabolizing, it, um, it's big. So an ostrich cell would be probably about this size right here. But once the ostrich ink starts to incubate the eggs, and then they start to metabolize, they start to, to um, have functions. They need nutrients and they produce waste. Until then, it can be big. But once it starts to metabolize, then the cells divide and become smaller. So lots of divisions going back and forth and become smaller and smaller and smaller. Another exception would be a neuron. 
that you have, some people um, have a neuron that might be as much as one meter in length going from their small part of the back all the way down to their big toe. Or another exception would be a muscle cell that goes from the hip all the way down to the knee. Okay, so let's now talk about, yeah, let's talk about cell theory. So what is cell theory? So what is, first what is a theory? So a theory is, um, a theory has lots of evidence to support an observation about the natural world. So the cell theory has lots of evidence to explain what a theory, what a cell is and its function. So the first part is that a cell is the basic unit of life. Okay, and you know we learned that when we were talking about the or, uh, biological organization. Okay, all living things are made up of cells. Okay. New cells arise only from pre-existing cells. So, this was not always believed. At one point, it was believed that um, cell came from spontaneous generation. And this gentleman, by the name of Louis Pasteur, developed a very elegant experiment to show that new cells arise only from pre-existing cells and dis to disprove spontaneous generation. So, we Pasteur. Oops. Yep. No, I got that. Got spelled that right. S T E U R. Okay. And so he developed this. Let me change my color. He developed this experiment using a flask with beef broth. He had two flasks, there's one, and here's two, and he boiled both flasks to try to kill anything that might be alive in there, and one of the flasks, actually both of the flasks, what he did is he drew out the neck of the flask into an S shape or into a swan change my color here. Necked flask. So he left one of the flasks with the S-shaped swan necked and then the other one he broke it off. So with the S-shaped neck, it allows air and oxygen into the broth. What it doesn't allow is dust. So dust would come in here and settle here and not be able to go into the broth. But in flask two, since he broke off the swan neck, dusk can go into the flask and settle into the broth. And so what he found was that in flask two, there was microbial growth. In, la in flask one, there was no growth. So he showed that it was the dust that was providing the start to the life in the broth. And it wasn't spontaneous generation. 
And then to even back this up, what he did was he took the flask and tipped it so that the broth down here came down the neck, touched the dust, and then went back into the flask. And after that, then there was microbial growth. So, that's a very elegant experiment to show that um, new cells arise only from pre-existing cells. Okay. So next, why are cells so small? So let's take a look at this figure. Let me get my pen. So let's take a look at this cube right here. And it has a four centimeter length side. So this cube has a total volume of 64 cubic centimeters. If I was to split this cube up, there would still be the same volume. And if I was to sp split it up even more, there would still be the same volume. So let's think about that. So a cell. A cell is alive. And a cell has functions that it needs to do. And to do that, it needs nutrients. It needs energy. And the only way to get that is to bring in those nutrients across the surface. And this is the cell membrane of the cell. And it's um, also producing waste. That waste also needs to cross that surface. So the activity in the cell requires the nutrients. In a big cell, it's requiring nutrients faster than nutrients can cross the surface. And it's producing waste faster than it can be sent back across the surface or the cell membrane. But in a smaller cell, it has a smaller cell has more volume, unit volume per, excuse me, more unit surface area per unit volume than, say, a bigger cube. So the bigger cube has more unit surface area per one unit volume. So, a smaller cell has adequate surface area to be able to maintain the activity that's going on inside the cell. Okay, so I hope that was interesting. Thank you.